several days after you escape Steelboro. Lagol helps you row aimlessly through the desert. Either one of you is liable to pass out at any moment. The sand skiff you stole as you fled the city has proven handy for getting around. But there isn't a scrap of food, nor a drop of water aboard. You probably should have had more of a plan, you think to yourself. The two of you row in complete silence. You fear if you make so much as a peep, the sheer effort involved will cause you to collapse. You propel the boat forward with all your might, when suddenly, a patch of quicksand swallows your sand skiff whole. Where are we? You look around, trying to figure out where the quicksand has spit you out. At the very least, your tight grip on the boat has prevented you from getting separated from Lagol. But in a desert this vast and empty, there's no tell- We better find some water, Lagol grumbles, shaking sand out of every possible crevice. You nod at him and begin searching your surroundings for potable water. Unfortunately, your legs are less cooperative. They may as well be made of lead. You're so thirsty, even the act of breathing feels painful. The sun's rays beat down upon you. It's so hot. You need water. Your head is killing you. You open the treasure chest to find a bottle glimmering. You snatch it up, but it's empty. The gold's shoulders drop in unison with yours. You lift your head. There before you, impossibly, walks Ram, your plush animal. No, 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 no. You shake your head. That isn't real. As consciousness threatens to forsake you, you catch sight of a young man. You've come at a very good time, he chirps. philosophical question, he says, his glasses reflecting the desert sun as he launches into a story. His words flow as quickly as the quicksand that brought you here. Lagol musters every last ounce of his strength to try and interrupt the torrent of Babel, when suddenly... A monster's cry issues from behind the youth. You see, I was about to be attacked by foul beasts, the youth says, beaming. Yes, you've come at a very good time indeed, he chirps again, which must be his way of asking for your help. You certainly haven't the strength to escape. Looks like you're in for a fight.
Calling upon the Steel Primal helped you fell the monsters. But before you can catch your breath... What on earth was that? The youth says, rushing up behind you from his vantage point for the battle. He peppers you with questions and comments in his breathless style. That was the Steel Primal, wasn't it? The fact that you can control it means you're one of the fabled subterrans. You are, aren't you? I had no idea you actually existed. Well, if today isn't my lucky day, if you don't mind my asking, how do you control that beast? I have deduced that the card you're holding there is the key to controlling them, but beyond that, I... Ugh. Whew, this guy sure can talk. He pays your pained expression no mind as he carries on, finally realizing that he has yet to introduce himself. The young man's name is Polka, and he's on a long, winding journey in pursuit of monsters to study. As if you hadn't heard enough, he asks if you'd like to hear an explanation about the primals. You agree that you would. As the words leave your lips, you realize just how addled the heat has left you. Polka, however, hasn't even done you the courtesy of waiting for an answer. He's already... There are three kinds, he tells you, at breakneck speed. In addition to the steel primal, there exists a fire primal and a frost primal. And all are powerful enough to cause changes in their natural environment because of... Unfortunately, your fevered brain can parse no more of his blathering. Look, we helped you, so give us some water already, Legol barks, clearly out of patience. Finally, Polka closes his mouth for the first time since you've met, for he, too, has no water on his person. You stare at him, speechless. You know, I'm actually rather thirsty, he says, and collapses into the... Clearly, his was a thirst brought on by incessant blabbering, rather than fleeing from monsters. You both look at Polka's crumpled form, and then at one another. Mind and body pushed well beyond their limits. The two of you finally surrender to sweet, sweet unconsciousness. You awaken to find yourself lying down inside a tent. Startled, you leap to your feet. Well, you seem much better, a woman says sweetly as she enters. She says she found the three of you collapsed in the desert and nursed you back to health. You thank her and quickly ask where she's taken Legol. She tells you Legol woke up not long before. He and Polka are at a stall outside. You exit the tent to find several more lined up before you. It looks like you've been picked up by a caravan. You arrive at the stall to find Legol and Polka devouring food as if it were a competition.
You heave a sigh of relief upon seeing them alive and well. Lagol notices you as he reaches for a bit of food. He stays his hand and instead beckons you over. Get in on this, he says between bites. You waltz calmly up to the table, snatch up an entire barrel of some liquid or other, and proceed to drink. Having eaten and drank your fill, you offer thanks for the meal. According to Legol and Polka, a stout man treated them to their meal at the stall earlier. You find the man hurrying about busily and thank him for the meal. Ah, you're all awake he says with a satisfied nod. He introduces himself as the circus's ringmaster and explains that they're on a tour of the desert. As someone fascinated by the circus, you'd always wanted to talk with a ringmaster. It's your lucky day. Before you speak so much as a syllable, the caravan is beset by monsters. You all draw your weapons. Polka barges into battle unannounced. I too shall fight, he proclaims. Legol asks if he can fight, to which Polka replies that it comes with the territory when one studies monsters. You're in for a world of hurt if you underestimate science, because science makes medicine, and you shouldn't underestimate that, Polka rambles, drawing. You take up arms shoulder to shoulder with Polka and prepare to fight. Battle time. The ringmaster thanks you profusely for defeating the monsters. It seems the countless monster attacks are to blame for scattering his troop to the winds. He's at a loss for what to do. You notice, however, that the number of sighs he's peppered his story with feels very intentional. He looks your way rather bashfully. You suspect he wants your help. Of course we'll help you, Polka blurts out before you can answer. But the three of you expect fair compensation for the effort, he adds slyly. Polka turns to you and Legol, grinning from ear to ear. Let's get going, he chirps excitedly. Did you hear him correctly? 
Yes, it seems like you did. And just like that, you and Legol have been roped into helping, too. Legol objects, only to be drowned out by Polka's contemporaneous rebuttal, a treatise on the value of money and friendship. And so it goes that you, Legol, and Polka end up combing the desert for lost circus troopers. You pull it loose, revealing a somewhat tarnished bangle. That might be the bangle capable of freeing the sand prowler czar, Polka blurts out. To hear Polka tell it, the sand prowler czar was a monster that once ruled this region through fear and despair. And he's careful to note that some monsters still revere this czar. Well, legend has it that the Sand Prowler Czar is sealed in the sand ruins, Polka explains. If Polka's telling the truth, then you're holding something pretty dangerous. You figure it can't hurt to keep something so potentially valuable and slip it into your pack. You sense another long polka lecture coming and start walking. You hear the sound of feet hurriedly whooshing through the sand as he tries to catch up. Those were just his feet, right? Yeah, had to be. time.
you happen upon a tent pitched in front of some ruins. Might there be another performer within? You peer inside. Why, yes, the young girl you see before you may well be one of the performers, but she's rather tearful at the moment. Are you with the circus? Polka asks gently. The yes, beast tamer, circus, she says through her tears before begging for your help. Wading through the fragmented words, you gather that a monster swallowed her performing partner and ran off. She goes on to lament that this is all her fault as sobs rack her body anew. We have to help her, Polka says softly. He declares that he cannot abide turning away from someone who's been separated from someone they care for. You're inclined to agree with him. So long as there are lives to be saved, you'll fight to save them. Are you okay? Legol asks carefully, sensing that you're in pain. You nod and begin walking toward the ruins. Expected nothing less.
done? Battle time. Wait a minute, Polka says suddenly. He begins tapping on the wall in several places, listening intently as he does so. There's nothing behind this wall, he says, pointing at one section of it. Not one to wait for permission, Legol strikes the section of wall with all his might. And what do you know? Polka was right. The wall concealed a hidden chamber. That's a scientist for you, Polka boasts, puffing out his chest. Science is awesome, you reply, jaw slack with wonder.
Get him. Battle time.
I expected nothing. Battle time.
battle. The door is shut tight. It has a keyhole, which suggests the existence of a key. Perhaps a wall could be broken? Pulka stops you. Wait a moment. Legol shakes his head. We should just break it down. He hits it with all his... And with that, the wall crumbles, revealing... 
to your surprise, a hidden passage. You come across a weathered stone monument. The letters S-A-A-R are written on it. And there's a hollow where something clearly used to rest. The area around the stone monument is littered with what appear to be monster bones. The whole thing feels ominous beyond words but you dig around in your pack for something that might fit the monument's hollow. Operating on a hunch, you reach for the tarnished bangle you picked up earlier and slot it into the hollow. So, the Sand Prowler Czar is sealed here, Polka says, his voice quivering. The monster bones littering the site begin to rattle. It sure looks like you've awoken the Sand Prowler Czar from its slumber. There's no getting out of this fight.
The Sand Prowler Czar is but a pile of bones once more, its body thoroughly destroyed. The menacing energy you felt around the monument and Bangle has also vanished. Cracks form in the Bangle, their crooked fingers reaching up every which way through the monument. It crumbles to dust in seconds. A treasure chest peeks out from beneath the rubble. Might this be the Sam Prowler Czar's treasure? You fling the chest open with glee and find an exquisite accessory within. 